Tiger website has a very good documentation page with instructions for the most popular Linux or Unix distributions where you can install Agar. And before we do that, it's always a good idea to take a look at system requirements. Here on the manual installation page, you're welcome to read this before uh, you proceed on your own. But in short, you obviously need a server uh, where you can um, access via SSH with root privileges. So that means that you can either have it local like I have here Ubuntu installed on VirtualBox on my Windows machine, or you can simply buy VPS hosting. And these days you can get really cheap. For this screencast, I will be installing Agar on Ubuntu. And I actually have a series of screencasts, Drupal development environment on Linux. And even though it's the next version of Ubuntu, it still applies. I mean, things really haven't changed that much since then. If you do order a VPS from a hosting provider, make sure you don't have any conflicting um, control panels and stuff, such as cPanel. The reason is Agar has its own custom configuration of Apache and so do these other control panels and you don't want any conflict there. Agar offers you a choice of uh, either automatic install on um, Debian, which also means Ubuntu is being a distribution of Debian, or manual installation. I would say that it's sort of counterintuitive, but in my experience, if you're just starting with this whole Agar and thing and you're not a very experienced Linux administrator, I actually recommend going the manual installation route. And it's just for some strange reason, it has always worked better for me than automatic install. Something has always gone wrong there. Either some dependency was not installed or the permissions were not set correctly or whatnot. Now with manual installation, you can actually go step by step and um, see what's involved. And it's a very good practice. And maybe you will spend 10 extra minutes, but I think at there might be a, a moment in the future where you will be happy that you do that. The next step is installing essential system components such as Apache and MySQL. Uh, I'm gonna open the terminal and I can simply copy this line. Copy paste into the terminal. And I do need to use sudo here. If you're logged in as root, which you're likely to be, if you're using a VPS, then you can omit the sudo prefix there. Some of these packages might be already installed. In this case, it's just gonna skip over them. Pastrix is gonna um, ask about how we want to run our mail system, so click tab. Okay, and I would say, I guess you can go for the internet side if you're doing it on VPS and here I'll just choose local only. The mail name is whatever the domain name for a server. For example, if it's server at example.com, then this should be example.com. Now, this is local, so I'll just use the name of my virtual machine, but I'm gonna do it lowercase so that now change the host files. And I'll show you how later. All right, let's take a look at the next step. We need to configure Apache and basically just do two things. One is enable mod rewrite. Okay, let's restart now because we, we can do it later after the other thing. Now we can create a symlink to the Agar config. Okay. So at this point, you shouldn't restart a patch until you actually install Agar because this configuration doesn't still doesn't exist, so you won't be able to restart the server. The next step is very important, and it involves configuring 
the host name of your machine. And there are a couple of things here that are not specifically mentioned, but I would like to share them with you. What they're saying here that um, you should have a fully qualified domain name configured. So if you run host name, and then you run. Now, in my case, they are identical. If you have a web server or a VPS, uh, you will probably have something like server at your domain.com there when you're on hostname dash F. So now I'm going to open the host files. And I'm going to make sure that my hostname is under 127.0.01. Otherwise, I will have errors. And so you, the other thing I want to do is, uh, make this hostname lowercase. I should have done it while I was installing, but I kind of forgot. So I'll do it now. The reason being is that Agar, when it determines your hostname, it automatically makes it lowercase. And then you will have issues with, uh, my SQL server not being able to reach itself and you will have some strange duplicate side aliases. You really don't want that to happen. So let's save this. I will also change hostname file. We'll do the same thing. And also start hostname. Let's check our hostname now. All right, looks great. At this point, we're ready to create an actual Agar user. Again, we can just copy paste the comment. Forget about sudo if you do it localhost. as well as adding um, agar to the group www-data. After creating the agar user, we have to configure the sudo's files. Scroll to the end, add this line here. Next, let's install the my SQL server. Uh, it's a good practice to give your root user a password. Then repeat it. After MySQL is installed, uh, we have to configure the uh, configuration file. Specifically, we need to find find address and comment it out. Let's restart. Now in MySQL is installed, you can actually check. You can use the resolve, resolve IP. Um, comment. Yep, everything seems to be correct. At this point, Agar instructions ask us to become an Agar user. And if you're logged in as root on a server, you can just copy this command. However, uh, if you've just installed Ubuntu, the root account is going to be locked and you can unlock it by running this command. Now you can 
try running this as user. And we have become Agar. Great. Our next item is installing Drush. Again, copy the commands. It's actually for what, five now. Okay, let's actually get the Drush from Drupal.org. Unzip it. And then remove the zipped file. In order to be using Drush comments such as Drush um, status, um, you'll need to either create a sim link as explained here, or add Drush to your uh, to the Agar's user uh, in the environmental path variable, and this is what we're gonna be doing because we will mostly be using Drush as Agar to manage our websites. So in order to do that, you have to modify your Bash RC. Oops. Uh, let me get that become Agar again. Go to my home directory. I will need to add this line to the .bashrc and save it and load the... And after you do it, you have to uh, start another terminal session, Call this one, start a new one, in order for the uh, variable to take into effect. So now if I run Trash status, for example, um, you can see it's working. Now we can install provision using new install drush. And finally, the most exciting part is actually installing um, Agar platform itself. Probably it's going to ask you for a few settings. Most of them are going to be pre-configured. So it's using localhost as our um, domain name, which is a good thing because we are on the localhost. Um, let's enter the password that we set up the root user with. And I would use something like, this doesn't really matter. Let's leave it at this. So let's proceed with the install. It might take a while. And then Hostmaster installation script is downloading the project that it needs for the front end. And finally, you will get a URL to the um, Hager front end. Let's copy it to the browser. Now we can only log in and reset the password. Just like you would do in a regular Drupal account. And we're good to go. Um, Agar is installed. Uh, you can proceed to actually administering the Drupal sites. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention is that if you're installing it on VPS, 
modifying the host file, then instead of the local um, IP, you will obviously need to use the, your server IP and then your domain. So it would be something like, and then just a note. Another thing we want to do is, let me get back to Hager, um check if the cron is running. So you can see to install the cron tab. And if we go in Agar um, site config um, queues, we have to check if okay, they are enabled and they seem to be running. Sometimes you kind of have to restart cron tab or something like that in case the queue does get stuck. So I guess this is all for today. I will try to do more agar related screencasts because there is a lot a lot of interesting things in this system but as far as installation goes this is pretty much over so until next time this was Natalie from friendlyrubble.com